Hey everyone, Phil here and welcome back to the channel. Now without further ado, let's just dive into this mystery and if you do enjoy the video, please make sure to give it a like. The chapter opens in the summer of 1965 in the lush, verdant landscapes of Hubei Province, central China. The air is thick with anticipation as a team of archaeologists, led by the determined professor Wang Zhongshu, begins excavations at a newly discovered site near the Yangtze River. This site, located in the outskirts of the city of Jingzhou, is believed to be a significant historical treasure trove, potentially holding relics from the tumultuous spring and autumn period, approximately 771 to 476 BC. Introducing the diverse team, each member is characterized by their unique expertise and shared passion for uncovering the past. Professor Wang, a seasoned archaeologist with decades of experience, is accompanied by Zhang Yiren, a Jung, enthusiastic historian specializing in ancient Chinese warfare, and Liu Mei, a skilled conservator known for her meticulous approach to preserving ancient artifacts. Together, they are supported by a group of eager local students and experienced diggers. As the team carefully excavates the site, they uncover the entrance to a tomb, hidden beneath layers of earth and time. The excitement grows as they navigate through a corridor adorned with intricate carvings depicting scenes of ancient battles and mystical creatures, hinting at the tomb's noble origins. The walls, though worn, still bear remnants of vibrant colors and complex patterns, offering a glimpse into the artistic sophistication of the period. In a small sealed chamber, the team makes a groundbreaking discovery, an exquisitely crafted sword, lying in a wooden scabbard adorned with jade and bronze fittings. The sword, remarkably well preserved, lies next to a skeleton, believed to be of high nobility given the tomb's grandeur. The air in the chamber is heavy with history, as the team stands in awe of the sword's pristine condition, untouched by the ravages of time. The chapter culminates with a detailed description of the sword. Measuring over 55 centimeters in length, the blade glistens in the dim light of the chamber, its edges still sharp and menacing. The hilt is wrapped in silk while the blade itself is etched with mysterious patterns and characters that hint at its royal ownership. The most striking feature is its resistance to corrosion, a mystery that baffles the team and foreshadows the scientific investigations to come. As the day ends, the team carefully extracts the sword, aware that they hold a piece of history that could reshape the understanding of ancient Chinese metallurgy and craftsmanship. Professor Wang reflects on the significance of the find, pondering the stories and secrets that the sword might reveal about a civilization long gone but never forgotten. This chapter sets the stage for an enthralling journey into the past, inviting readers to join the team in unraveling the mysteries of the Gujian sword. In the cool, early morning light of the following day, the team, surrounded by a palpable sense of excitement, gathers in a makeshift lab near the excavation site. Here, under the watchful eyes of Professor Wang, Zhang Yirin, and Liu Mei, the sword is delicately removed from its scabbard for the first time in over two millennia. The blade, as it emerges, reveals its full glory, a stunningly preserved artifact, its surface gleaming with an almost otherworldly sheen. The chapter delves into a meticulous examination of the sword, it measures 55.7 centimeters in length, with a blade 4.6 centimeters wide and a hilt 8.4 centimeters long. The blade, forged from bronze, is astonishingly sharp, capable of slicing through a stack of 20 sheets of paper with ease. Intricately patterned with rhombi and interlocking triangles, the design is not merely decorative but also enhances the blade's structural integrity. The edge of the blade features a unique composition, with a higher tin content than the rest of the sword, which explains its remarkable sharpness. The guard and the pommel are expertly crafted, featuring a delicate balance of bronze, iron, and lead, indicative of an advanced understanding of metallurgy. The most intriguing aspect of the sword is its inscriptions. Two columns of text, with eight characters in total, run along one side of the blade. 
the characters are elegantly carved, each stroke precise, evoking the skill of a master calligrapher. The inscription reads, King of Yue, and made this sword for his personal use. This discovery sparks a heated debate among the team members about its implications, suggesting a direct link to the historical figure, King Gujian. The chapter also touches on the almost mystical aura surrounding the sword. The local laborers and students share legends they heard from their elders about a mighty king and his invincible sword, linking the newly discovered artifact to these ancient tales. This blend of historical fact and folklore adds a layer of intrigue and wonder to the discovery. Liu Mei leads the initial preservation efforts. Despite its excellent condition, the sword still requires careful handling to prevent any deterioration. The team establishes a controlled environment with regulated humidity and temperature to mimic the conditions of the tomb. This section showcases the painstaking efforts in conserving such a priceless artifact, balancing the need for study with the imperative of preservation. The chapter concludes with the team reflecting on the significance of the sword. It is not just a piece of metal, but a link to a long-lost era, a tangible connection to the people, culture, and technology of ancient China. Professor Wang, gazing upon the sword, muses about the countless stories it could tell, the battles it might have seen, and the hands it passed through, contemplating its journey through the annals of history. This detailed exploration of the Gujian sword sets the stage for deeper investigations into its origins, its maker, and the era it hails from, promising a journey rich in history, science, and mystery. The chapter begins with a vivid portrayal of the tumultuous spring and autumn period of Chinese history, a time marked by political upheaval and continuous warfare among the various states. It sets the stage for the introduction of King Gujian of Yue, a pivotal figure known for his resilience and strategic brilliance. The narrative transports the reader back to the 5th century BC, offering a glimpse into the life and times of this enigmatic ruler. The story of King Gujian unfolds, chronicling his early years as a ruler facing immense challenges. His initial defeat by the neighboring state of Wu and subsequent three-year captivity are detailed, highlighting his extraordinary patience and determination. The narrative captures his remarkable comeback, fueled by a blend of cunning diplomacy and military strategy, eventually leading to his triumph over Wu and solidifying his status as a legendary leader. Within this historical context, the chapter delves into the symbolic significance of the sword. For Gu Jian, the sword was not just a weapon, but a representation of his journey from humiliation to sovereignty. It symbolized his unyielding spirit and the resilience of the Yue people. The narrative suggests that the inscriptions on the sword might have been a personal declaration of his triumph over adversity. The chapter paints a vivid picture of the cultural and political landscape during King Gujian's reign. It explores the intricacies of court life, the advancements in arts and sciences, and the complex relationships between different states. This backdrop provides a deeper understanding of the environment in which the Gujian sword was crafted and used. Moving from historical facts to the realm of legends, the chapter explores various folklore and myths that have sprung up around King Gujian and his sword. Stories of his unwavering dedication, such as sleeping on straw and tasting gall to remind himself of his hardships, add a mythical layer to his character. The sword, in these tales, often features as a divine instrument, bestowed upon Gujian by the heavens to achieve his destiny. The chapter interweaves the current archaeological findings with historical records and oral traditions. It examines other artifacts found in the tomb, such as ceremonial vessels, jade ornaments, and inscribed tablets, which collectively paint a portrait of King Gujian's era. These discoveries provide crucial corroborative evidence, linking the sword to the historical figure and his time. The chapter concludes with a contemplative reflection on the intersection of history and legend. The team, especially Zhang Yirin, ponders over the enduring legacy of King Gujian 
and how the sword serves as a tangible connection to a past that blurs the lines between fact and folklore. This connection brings to life a story that has survived for over 2,000 years, resonating through the ages, through a blend of historical analysis, narrative storytelling, and archaeological insights, this chapter offers a comprehensive and engaging exploration of King Gujian's legacy and the enduring mystique of his legendary sword. The chapter opens in the modern-day lab, where the team is bewildered by the Gujian sword's astonishing state of preservation. Despite being buried for over 2,000 years, the sword exhibits no signs of corrosion, a phenomenon rarely seen in artifacts of its age. The chapter sets out to explore the scientific and environmental factors that contributed to this remarkable preservation. A team of material scientists, led by Dr. Chen Hui, is introduced. They undertake a comprehensive analysis of the sword's composition. Using advanced techniques like X-ray fluorescence and electron microscopy, they discover a unique combination of copper, tin, and small amounts of lead and iron in the bronze alloy. This specific composition, they hypothesize, played a crucial role in preventing rust. The chapter also delves into the environmental conditions of the tomb. The team hypothesizes that the airtight scabbard, combined with the stable, dry climate of the tomb, created an ideal preservation environment. Detailed analysis of soil samples and microclimatic conditions of the tomb are presented to support this theory. The narrative shifts to the astonishing level of metallurgical skill evident in the sword's construction. Experts in ancient metallurgy are consulted, who explain how the swordsmiths of Gujian's time might have achieved such a high-quality alloy and crafting technique. The process of smelting, refining, and casting the bronze, as well as the precision required in adding trace elements, is explored in detail. The chapter also explores the burial rites and practices of the spring and autumn period, providing context for why the sword was placed in the tomb. Archaeologist Liu Wei provides insights into the cultural significance of weapons and burials, suggesting that the sword's placement with King Gujian was a mark of honor and respect, symbolizing his power and status in the afterlife. A comparative analysis with other contemporaneous bronze artifacts is presented. Most similar artifacts found in other tombs show some degree of corrosion, making the Gujian sword's condition even more extraordinary. The chapter discusses several hypotheses about why this particular sword was preserved so well, considering factors like its burial depth, the composition of the surrounding soil, and the construction of the tomb itself. The chapter then connects the ancient preservation of the Gujian sword to modern conservation techniques. Liu Mei discusses how understanding the sword's preservation can inform current practices in artifact conservation, emphasizing the importance of replicating certain conditions to protect other historical artifacts. The chapter concludes with a reflective discussion among the team members. They marvel at the advanced level of skill and knowledge possessed by the ancient swordsmiths and the people who buried it. The Gujian sword, they agree, stands not only as a testament to King Gujian's legacy, but also as a symbol of the sophisticated craftsmanship and intelligent preservation practices of ancient China. Through a blend of scientific analysis, historical context, and modern conservation perspectives, this chapter offers a deep dive into the intriguing mystery of the Gujian sword's exceptional preservation. The chapter opens in the lab, where the team is closely examining the inscriptions on the Gujian sword. These eight characters, carved with precision and clarity, hold the key to understanding more about the sword's origins and its owner. The team, along with a group of expert epigraphists, begins the meticulous task of deciphering the ancient script. The narrative dives into the complexities of ancient Chinese script, particularly the style used during the spring and autumn period. The inscriptions on the sword are written in a form of script that predates modern Chinese characters, making them both historically significant and challenging to interpret. Professor Zhang, a linguist specializing in ancient scripts, guides the reader through the evolution of Chinese writing, 
providing context for the inscription's significance. The eight characters are carefully analyzed and translated as King of Yue, and made this sword for his personal use. The chapter explores the implications of these words, suggesting a direct link to King Gujian. This section delves into what such a personal inscription signifies about the status of the sword and its intended use by the king himself, potentially as a symbol of power and authority. The chapter further examines the cultural and symbolic significance of inscriptions on swords in ancient China. Inscribing a weapon was not just an act of identification, but also a way to imbue it with moral or spiritual power. The sword, therefore, is not just a weapon, but a representation of the king's virtues and his divine right to rule. To provide a broader context, the chapter compares the Gujian sword's inscriptions with those found on other artifacts from the same period. This comparison reveals the uniqueness of the Gujian sword's inscriptions in terms of their clarity and the personal nature of the message, setting it apart from other contemporaneous weapons. The narrative then explores how inscriptions played a role in the warfare of the era, not just in a practical sense, but also in psychological warfare. Owning a sword inscribed by a king could boost morale and intimidate opponents, showcasing the power and prestige of the wielder. The chapter also touches upon how these ancient inscriptions are interpreted in the modern world. They provide a direct connection to the thoughts and intentions of people from over two millennia ago, offering invaluable insights into their beliefs, language, and culture. The chapter concludes with the team reflecting on the inscriptions as a message from the past, bridging millennia. These few characters on a bronze blade offer a tangible connection to King Gujian, his kingdom, and the era he lived in, bringing the legend into a more concrete realm of history. In this chapter, the Gujian sword's inscriptions are not just analyzed as historical artifacts. They are brought to life as a vital link to understanding the past adding depth and dimension to the story of one of ancient China's most enigmatic figures. This chapter begins with a vivid description of an ancient Chinese forge, painting a picture of the environment where the Gujian sword might have been created. The narrative takes the reader through the bustling atmosphere of the forge, with the heat of the fires, the clang of hammer on anvil, and the meticulous focus of the swordsmiths. This setting provides a backdrop for exploring the advanced metallurgical techniques of the time. The core of the chapter is a detailed examination of the sword's construction. The narrative breaks down the technical aspects of the sword-making process, starting from the selection of raw materials to the final assembly. The unique composition of the bronze alloy, the precise method of layering and folding the metal, and the careful tempering process are all explored in depth. The chapter also discusses how these techniques contributed to the sword's durability, sharpness, and resistance to corrosion. Attention is then turned to the intricate patterns etched into the blade. These geometric designs are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also serve to enhance the sword's structural integrity. The chapter delves into the possible symbolic meanings of these patterns, drawing connections to ancient Chinese beliefs and the symbolism associated with royalty and warfare. The narrative shifts to the present, where a group of modern swordsmiths attempts to replicate the Gujian sword's craftsmanship. These efforts highlight the complexity and skill involved in ancient sword making, the challenges faced by contemporary craftsmen in emulating these ancient techniques underscore the advanced level of metallurgical knowledge possessed by the sword's original creators. To place the Gujian sword in a broader context, the chapter compares it with contemporary swords from other cultures, such as the Roman Gladius and the Greek Siphos. This comparison not only showcases the uniqueness of the Gujian sword, but also highlights the global advancements in metallurgy and weaponry during the period. The chapter pays homage to the anonymous swordsmiths who created the Gujian sword. It speculates about their lives, their dedication to their craft, and the pride they must have felt in creating such a masterpiece. 
The narrative suggests that the sword is not just a relic of King Gujian, but also a testament to the skill and artistry of its makers. The chapter concludes with a reflection on the Gujian sword as a perfect blend of art and science. The sword, in its elegance and functionality, encapsulates the sophistication of ancient Chinese metallurgy and design. It stands as a symbol of the ingenuity and craftsmanship of an era that, though distant in time, continues to fascinate and inspire. In this chapter, the Gujian sword is more than a historical artifact. It is a portal into the past, offering insights into the technological prowess and artistic sensibility of ancient China. The narrative weaves together technical analysis, cultural context, and human stories to bring the sword's creation to life. The chapter opens with a detailed description of the tumultuous era during King Gujian's reign, a period characterized by frequent conflicts and power struggles between various Chinese states. This historical backdrop sets the stage for understanding the role and significance of swords like the Gujian in ancient warfare. The narrative delves into the dual role of the Gujian sword as both a practical weapon and a symbol of power and authority. The chapter explores how the sword's design, balance, and sharpness made it an effective tool in combat, while its ornate craftsmanship and inscriptions signified the high status and valor of its wielder, likely inspiring awe and morale among troops. The focus shifts to the specific tactical uses of the sword in battle. Historical accounts and military treatises from the era are examined to reconstruct the likely swordsmanship styles and combat techniques employed by warriors wielding such weapons. The narrative describes fast-paced duels, intricate maneuvers, and the importance of agility and precision in swordplay. Using historical records and a bit of creative speculation, the chapter presents hypothetical scenarios of how the Gujian sword might have been used in key battles during King Gujian's campaigns. These narratives illustrate the sword in action, cutting through armor, deflecting enemy blows, and playing a pivotal role in the tide of battle. The narrative then explores the role of the sword beyond the battlefield. It discusses how such weapons were also used in ceremonial contexts, possibly in rituals to boost troop morale or in oaths of loyalty. The psychological impact of a king wielding a legendary sword like the Gujian is also examined, highlighting how it could have served as a powerful symbol of leadership and divine favor. The chapter incorporates an analysis of the sword's condition, looking for signs of wear and tear that could indicate its use in combat. Experts in weapon conservation and forensic archaeology provide insights. Analyzing the blade's edge for micro-abrasions and impact marks that tell the story of its past encounters. The chapter concludes with a discussion of the Gujian sword's place in the broader context of military history. It reflects on how the sword, and others like it, influenced warfare tactics of the time, and how its legacy continued to inspire military leaders and swordsmiths in subsequent generations. Through a combination of historical analysis, tactical exploration, and imaginative reconstruction, this chapter brings to life the martial aspect of the Gujian sword, painting a vivid picture of its use in ancient Chinese warfare and its lasting impact as a symbol of power and martial prowess. The chapter opens by positioning the Gujian sword not just as a historical artifact, but as a powerful cultural symbol. It explores how the sword has come to embody the values of resilience and excellence, reflecting the enduring spirit of ancient China. This section delves into the sword's influence on Chinese cultural identity and national pride, emphasizing its role in the collective memory of a nation. The narrative then shifts to the sword's portrayal in literature and folklore. The chapter examines various ancient texts, poems, and stories where the sword is mentioned or alluded to, highlighting its status as an object of legend and lore. The sword story is woven into tales of heroism, strategy, and moral lessons, often serving as a central motif in narratives about King Gujian's life and reign. 
The chapter further explores the sword's depiction in various forms of art. This includes traditional Chinese paintings, sculptures, and more modern forms like graphic novels and films. Each representation is analyzed for its interpretation of the sword's symbolism, style, and historical context. The chapter also discusses how contemporary artists and filmmakers have reimagined the Gujian sword, infusing it with modern sensibilities while retaining its historical essence. Attention is turned to the educational role of the Gujian sword. The chapter describes how the sword is displayed in museums, both in China and internationally, and the way it is presented to the public. This section highlights the sword's role in educating people about Chinese history and metallurgy, featuring interviews with museum curators and educators who discuss the sword's impact on visitors and students. The Gujian sword's influence extends into popular culture, where it has inspired a resurgence in interest in ancient Chinese history and craftsmanship. The chapter examines how the sword has been featured in video games, television shows, and online forums, sparking curiosity and fascination among a new generation. This section reflects on the sword's role in bridging the gap between history and contemporary entertainment. The chapter concludes with a discussion on the sword's role in contemporary Chinese society. It reflects on how the Gujian sword has become a symbol of national pride and a reminder of China's rich historical heritage. The narrative touches on how the sword is used in national narratives and educational materials as a symbol of China's ancient advancements in technology and art. Through a rich tapestry of literature, art, education, and popular culture, this chapter illuminates the Gujian sword's profound impact on Chinese cultural heritage and its enduring legacy as a symbol of national identity and historical pride. The chapter begins by presenting the various theories and debates surrounding the Gujian sword's origins and history. It outlines the primary hypotheses proposed by historians and archaeologists, ranging from the sword being a personal weapon of King Gujian to it being a ceremonial object or a gift from a foreign dignitary. Each theory is explored in detail, considering the historical and archaeological evidence that supports or contradicts them. A significant portion of the chapter delves into the debate over the craftsmanship of the sword. Experts discuss the advanced metallurgical techniques evident in the sword's creation, sparking a debate about the level of technological advancement in the Yue state versus other contemporary civilizations. Theories about possible influences from other cultures, such as the Middle East or other regions of Asia, are examined including the possibility of foreign craftsmen in Yue. The chapter then shifts focus to the tomb where the sword was found. Archaeologists and historians debate the identity of the person buried with the sword. While some argue that it was King Gujian himself, others propose it could have been a high-ranking general or a close associate of the king. This section explores the evidence for each claim, including the layout of the tomb, accompanying artifacts, and skeletal analysis. The mystery of the sword's preservation is revisited with a more critical lens. The chapter discusses various theories about why the sword remained corrosion-free for over two millennia. While some experts argue that it was due to the unique composition of the metal and environmental factors, others suggest that ancient preservation techniques might have been deliberately applied. This section includes insights from materials, scientists and chemists, along with comparisons to other ancient artifacts. The narrative also touches on the cultural and political implications of the sword's discovery and the theories surrounding it. It delves into how the sword has become a symbol of national pride in China, and how different interpretations of its history can reflect or influence contemporary political narratives. This section provides a critical examination of how history and archaeology can intersect with nationalism and cultural identity. The chapter concludes with a look at the sword's place in academic discourse. It highlights ongoing research, debates, and the quest for new evidence, emphasizing the sword's role in advancing the understanding of ancient Chinese history and technology. 
The narrative underscores the dynamic nature of historical research, where new discoveries can challenge established theories and open up fresh avenues of inquiry. In this chapter, the Gujian sword is presented not just as an artifact, but as a catalyst for scholarly debate and exploration, reflecting the complexities and nuances of unraveling historical mysteries. The chapter offers a comprehensive and balanced view of the various theories and controversies, inviting readers to engage with the ongoing quest to fully understand this remarkable artifact's past. The chapter begins by detailing the current status of the Gujian sword, emphasizing its value as a national treasure in China. It is housed in a state-of-the-art facility at the Hubei Provincial Museum, displayed under carefully controlled conditions to ensure its preservation. The narrative describes the sword's display, highlighting the technology used to maintain optimal environmental conditions, such as temperature, humidity, and lighting, to prevent any deterioration. The chapter delves into the ongoing conservation efforts for the Gujian sword. It presents interviews with conservation experts who discuss the unique challenges in preserving an artifact of such historical and material significance. The narrative explores the advanced techniques used in conservation, including non-invasive analysis methods and the development of specialized display cases that replicate the tomb's original conditions. Attention is turned to the role of the Gujian sword in education and academic research. The chapter highlights various programs and initiatives that use the sword to educate the public about ancient Chinese history and technology. It also outlines how the sword has become a focal point for research in archaeology, history, metallurgy, and materials science, fostering interdisciplinary studies and collaborations. The narrative explores the use of modern technology to enhance public engagement with the sword. This includes virtual reality experiences that allow users to interact with a digital version of the sword, and augmented reality apps that provide detailed information about its history and construction. These digital initiatives are shown to bring the sword story to a wider, global audience and to younger generations. The chapter also examines the influence of the Gujian sword on contemporary craftsmanship and art. It features stories of modern swordsmiths inspired by the ancient techniques and materials used in the sword's construction, as well as artists who incorporate its imagery and symbolism into their work. This section underscores the sword's ongoing impact on cultural and artistic practices. The narrative addresses the ethical considerations in managing such a valuable artifact. It discusses the balance between providing public access to the sword and ensuring its preservation for future generations. This includes debates about the reproduction of the sword for study and display purposes, and the implications of such reproductions for historical authenticity and cultural heritage. The chapter concludes with a forward-looking perspective on the Gujian sword's future. It emphasizes the sword's role as a living piece of history that continues to inspire and educate. The narrative ends with reflections from various experts on the sword's potential to unlock further secrets of the past and its enduring legacy as a symbol of ancient China's rich cultural and technological heritage. In this final chapter, the Gujian sword is presented as more than just an ancient artifact. It is a dynamic and evolving symbol of history, culture, and technology, whose story continues to unfold and captivate people around the world. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope that you did enjoy the video. Let me know in the comment section if you heard about this story before. And now we'll say, have a good evening, and I will see you in the next mystery. Peace.